Okay, so starting uh, game turn seven's actual movement. Serbs got a reinforcement garrison. They actually have a couple more divisions coming in. Well, one more division and an extra asset. Uh, so they're not completely without reinforcements. Plus, they got the uh, Montenegrins, which I don't know what they're going to do. My first thought was, hey, let's concentrate here, do attritional fighting, etc. But when I started looking at uh, falling back and supporting, you know, the recovery of my units, I'm just like, yeah, that's going to open too big a gap. As it is, I got a big gap here. Uh, I mean, I could do something like this, which would tighten things up a little bit, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I just don't have enough major units on the line. This is basically, I think each one of these is a single division. If I got a double division anywhere, I ought to fix that. <laughs> yeah, each of these is a single division. I could, uh, you know, have the cav in use somewhere, but over here I've got a, uh, I've got the dominating force really, but it's not massively dominating. This extra division, I could have thrown that up to help reinforce the line there, but I really want that five victory points. That's worth as much as losing this would be. It's basically a once per game thing, so, you know, whatever. Ah, uh, oh, geez, did I give the Austrians their, I don't think I gave the Austrians their three points for the turn, for, for the interface, fuck. So hard to remember shit. You know, there's so much so much going on in the game, and that three points could be more important than, like, you know, all the, all the fiddly stuff that I'm doing in terms of uh, outcome of the game. But anyway, we got the Serbs trying to go on the offensive here, trying to puncture this. And beyond that, yeah, you know, I probably can withdraw as much as the 6th Army can um, in order to strengthen my position here. I don't see any real opportunities for this invasion to Sirmian or, you know, some other kind of attack. Everything's kind of open here, but so, <laughs> you know, there's nothing of value up there. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, that will put us on the counter move phase. Uh, on more personal note, my mother just died uh, last night. And, uh, you know, I mean, in a way, it's a, it's a relief thing. It really is. Things were pretty bad for her. And, uh, I don't think this is going to impact me too much. Uh, the biggest impact that it was having was the, am I going to be needed there, you know, for some reason. And that kind of came out as, that was on one of the last videos, the, hey, I may have to drop everything and, and head down. There were, they were having trouble taking care of her at home, and uh, it just, you know, she did not survive the last operation, which maybe, I, I think it's for the best. Uh, but whatever. All right, I'll be back in a bit. I don't well, as usual, missed something. Um, the Danny unit, which is part of the 4th Corps, 2nd Army, more or less. Uh, I knew I was supposed to withdraw it, but it got left on the map because I spent a lot of time hunting the detachments down and then forgot that I was supposed to remove that. And it participated in an attack. Again, you know, there's a certain level of, oops, uh, well, sometimes things, you're looking at an alternate history anyway here, so maybe they were left in a little longer or whatever. I'm also not sure that they had an impact. Um, uh, the four strength points they provided probably did not, but being an additional formation may have, so I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> it, 
Uh, I'm starting to work with the Austrians here. I got a kind of a problem. I can't withdraw this because of these stupid idiots being back here. Um, they're going to be a problem. That is for sure. Now, I can kind of ooze them back this way. But right now I have to hold the line here for that supply uh, center. And I could get caught very easily. If I did, it would be hard to get them into supply. But we shall see. In particular, this unit cannot go moving into here during counter movement. It doesn't have the movement allowance. So we're running into troubles there. And also, uh, I found I had to dance back to get back in supply. Eventually, I can extend those supply lines. But I don't like doing that simply because, hey, maybe I actually need, you know, whatever, the ammo supply. Uh, maybe I need a greater ammo supply than I'm recording, you know, than I would record. And plus, I want to avoid using the number counters that don't exist <laughs> for as long as I possibly can. Oh. All right. We get to drop this prepared attack that I wanted to put in there. And actually, see, I could throw a lot more strength in if I wanted to. I don't know. That's going too far, I think, to try to figure out. But this I definitely wanted to do and just kind of ignored. Elsewhere, trying to back up from here so that I can maybe slip around this way. So I can get to this hex, that's fine. One, two, three, four, five. This is a sixth hex. Doesn't put me in a zone. Then I could drop to here and start collecting supply this way. <laughs> and ooze out or maybe work my way to help defend whatever. We'll see, you know, what the necessity is. But the other thing is, I may just have to pull these guys out this way where they're holding the door for them. Over here, I didn't rush forward to engage with everything as much as I have been. I want more maneuver flexibility and throwing myself along the line if I'm not going to attack doesn't make sense. I think I'm going to launch an attack there, though, uh, just to keep the pressure on the Serbs. Both attacks were successful. We have the Serbians moving into here, Visigard. That's going to give them five victory points, and I'll score that now so they don't forget it, because otherwise <laughs> it's going to happen right here. Actually, it says immediately, I think, so I don't know. But anyway, um, we have captured that. And over here, we got battered back with a strength loss, and the Austrians continue their push forward. And I'm just getting ground up by uh, the numbers, <laughs> as it were. Uh, careful attacks, not having a reserve to throw in. Uh, early on, I had the potential for a reserve and screwed up, and now I don't have room for one. And that's really got my army kind of in collapse here. Uh, even with the Austrians kind of recovering some of their forces in the background. Uh, although this 29th division really should be taken off the line, but it's been too necessary for continuing the push. Uh, which, this is the part of the game that I like, right? Uh, this is where it shines compared to other things. The amount of detail as to what the casualties represent and, and the effectiveness and what can be recouped and why it can be recouped and everything like that. Uh, one thing that I see that's kind of missing is only the Serbs are tracking artillery shells. Now, it may be that the Austrians had essentially unlimited firepower uh, a, 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 during this part of the campaign, but I'm hoping that on the West Front, well, yeah, in 1914, for example, the Brits were really low on shells, if I recall correctly, and, and had problems with their shells too, but that would just factor into the quality of their artillery fire. But if I'm right, there was actually uh, not enough shells in 1914 uh, to be able uh, to operate properly. So I'm hoping that there's something like that, at least for some uh, of the players. One of the issues is, 
Where the big shell shortages happened was when you entered into the firepower stage, where you just had to um, uh, accumulate up huge quantities of resources for any for any offensive. Um, However, when you play something like Le Grand Guerre, I believe the shells in, in 1914 kind of run out, even for the Germans, <laughs> that they actually end up um, running low as to what, the, what they have capable, uh, what they have available to them uh, for the offensive. And so I wouldn't be shocked if that game tracks artillery ammo for everyone, um, simply because... It was part of the, this is why the campaign peters out. Um, but, yeah, this is this is a very troubling situation. I have a garrison that I fell back to, but, you know, now I've got another damaged unit here. And <clears throat> if we look at, well, if we look at first core here, it's kind of in charge of the damage stuff that's stacked back here. It doesn't have the capability to throw more stuff in. Anyway, we'll hit here, no cav withdrawal, no river stuff, Kamaji, I gotta move them back, and I already did the victory points for this turn. Um, yeah, I've given up ground, and I ought to be considering whether, you know, where I'm gonna be defending. So, here, here's the problem though, a prepared attack can pin me in place. So I can't really say, oh, I'm going to throw those Kamaji back where... I don't know why I'm calling them that. Komit Komitachi. Uh, back to uh, as far, you know, as far as I hope my line to be on my next... Uh, you know, estimating where I'm going to be attacked next is not the easiest thing. Um, Will it be the line that I'm at right now, or will it be the line I intend to be on after my um, my counter move? And I don't know. Notice something. It's no big deal. Uh, Sarah River or Salva River uh, water levels are low. Look that up. Basically, between here and here, it, it, the boats function normally, and that's the only place I've been using them. Uh, if I start heading this way, there are problems with doing that, and there's no real reason. I'm not sure why I have this boat floating around there. <laughs> I feel like it's bombarding Belgrade or something, but it really isn't. Um, I should probably have it clustered with these, these gunboats, and there's just nothing going on over here. And so the central part of the board, though, the boats are navigable on, and that is fine. I'm not actually, like, there's like one hex here. Maybe. I'm not sure, because this is, this is the part of the river that's going into the Danube. It, it can't just disappear there, and obviously the Danube is not going to get low. So I think all they're saying is everything up here is too low. I don't know. But there's no reason to move your boats up there, so <laughs> it's really not that big a deal. All right, let's figure out what the Austrians are doing. For the movement phase, the Austrians launching prepared attacks to try to bust up uh, the front of the Serbians. I think I'm going to make it here and get my goal, and that's a huge deal because then I don't pay any... You, you even pay a pretty big victory point goal uh, penalty, even if you just get like a hex away that I really don't want to have to face. And uh, trying to make my withdrawal here with 15th Corps coming in, it'll probably end up shifting over to 5th uh, Army's command. Uh, I think one, two, three, four, five, six. That's hard to do yet. Right now, I'm still better off running off of this, and I don't want to make this extended because that'll affect everybody, because everybody's running off that. This thing's useless, uh, but there's no real reason to pull it back. This one can cover 
anything along the Sava. This one, in case I have to fall back in this direction or whatever. Um, so I'll keep it on the sixth as, as long as I have to extend, and that may actually be forever. Uh, there are really no rail lines. This is the furthest my rail lines go into Serbian territory. And so I am not going to be able to, uh, you know, to push an attack all, all the way down with any ease. Uh, Belgrade becomes pretty important because control of this path down, this isn't a railway that I can use, but you know, I'd want to be able to launch coming from close off on the river. And this is the last place before I hit the Danube where it takes multiple uh, pontoon bridges. I should have taken this pontoon bridge off and rebuilt it over here last turn. Uh, I left some units here with the intention of putting a zone on these guys so they can't reinforce. Important factor. Uh, it might have made more sense. You know, it might have appeared to make more sense to just push all my units into one hex. And some of the stuff in the background trying to recover, etc. Or pull back far enough that I can recover. Phew. Counter movement. And there are counter moves for a couple of purposes. One pushing forward up this way, continuing the threat there. Uh, trying to cut things off here, make it harder uh, to get out of there. And gotta kind of push my supply lines. We're gonna see things go to extended supply, I think. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, that's fine. But here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I want this in supply, I'm gonna have to flip that. But I do, I think that's worth it. I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm gonna be making many attacks. <laughs> It's going to be an amount that can channel through that. That has probably eight because it's an army uh, depot. Um, oh, and I found out somebody, uh, apparently the living rules for second edition include a rule of, uh, and I, I'm not going to bother with living rules if things are okay. <laughs> it, it, Errata is one thing, um, trying to page through, and this came up again in GMT's things, trying to page through a full rule book to try to figure out where the changes are. If the game's broken, yeah, I'll look. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, if I find something that really damages the game horribly. But apparently the third edition of the rules, that didn't carry into it. So I don't know if this was a hey, let's make a fix, and then the decision was, no, that's not right. You've already got a limitation in play for one army, and everything's fine. Those rail lines work just fine for one army command. Uh, or if, if the change just didn't make it in to the third edition out of accident. I don't care either way. I'm perfectly happy with the way this is. It already handled something. But anyway... Um, using most of the Serbian counter move to try to increase the rate of uh, fixing my units, which includes pulling back further. I really hope this holds. I threw some units into play uh, to give it a little extra artillery support just in case I can make the Serbs pay, or the Austrians pay a little bit more uh, for that attack. Because if that doesn't hold, then they move into here and this big hex that's filled with units that are recovering. Uh, don't get their recovery, you know, they don't get the points. And this thing's got like seven recovery points on it. Um, obviously though, falling back would have cost me more. So, you know, or, or would have cost me anyway. Uh, I'd be at about, I don't know, maybe two recovery points or something instead. So it seemed worth it to do this. Uh, but you're always kind of on the back foot when, uh, when you're trying to recover. Okay, and that gets me to the actual battles, which I think we're just going to be doing the prepared assaults by the Austrians. Let's talk about this combat phase. Um, first of all, I forgot or didn't do and wanted to do 
uh, some digging in here. I've got two things I can dig in. I might as well start the uh, procedure here. The additional movement points allow uh, on, on my next turn will get me up to the 13, actually 14 movement points. <laughs> well, it'll get me to the 13 movement points I need. I have 14 um, to construct a couple of uh, entrenchments. And of course, those will be one hex entrenchments. Those are just there for ease of me seeing. They're only intended for use for two hex units, which uh, <laughs> given my inability to hold the line so far, <laughs> I certainly do not want to uh, weaken those lines any more than they already are. It might be useful down here, although the movement capabilities are so painful that the idea of two heck of spreading a unit out to try to cover more territory seems painful. Um, we uh, held the line in both fights. I think we took a CER reduction here. Here we had a very, very interesting result on the combat table. And let's see if I can find it. It was this. Both sides took uh, plus two to their die roll and a strength point loss. Now, strength point losses in and of themselves are pretty rare, and both sides taking them, that's something that really the intensity system generally generates. But in this case, neither side was willing to... I, I'm really loath to increase intensity. <laughs> Because you're basically saying, give me casualties, baby. <laughs> for, for ground, you know, whichever way, direction you take it in. Um, might be willing to do it over here. And just because this is, you know, the Fifth Army's goal and all that. Preventing them from getting there. Uh, but anyway, actual, actual morale losses, there were none up here. And that puts me to the end of the boat. Now here I am going to build this river. And make a mess. Pontoon always has to be the top unit on the stack. Doesn't really matter. You're allowed to look under it though essentially because um, we're not in the Serb turn. Victory points. We get the one point for the space we hold and that pushes us to turn eight. Yay. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting my enjoyment out of it, and, you know, the occasional fuck ups due to the army or to the organization charts, they don't bother me too much. <laughs> I found myself cheating again, I believe. This time on the strategic plan objectives, uh, Sixth Army, I think, did fine. But Fifth Army, I withdrew some units from the line to recover them. Apparently, that's not good. Uh, all infantry formations uh, that aren't CI demoralized are affected by the strategic plan restrictions during both movement phases. Um, CAV supply and assets are not restricted. It can't move unless it's closer to uh, one of the Army's operational objectives. I feel like my recovery attempts were within the spirit of this idea. I, I wasn't trying to shift the front at all, so I'm going to let it go, but Technically, you have to kind of grind your army to shit um, to be able uh, to be able to uh, to stay within your goals. Now, I again don't know that I particularly violated anything. I mean, there are a lot of uh, the thing that I violate, I, I didn't violate the, the, the idea behind it. I mean, I, I did not shift my front. I did not do anything along that line. The only real question is, um, should this have allowed me to do this? Now, we have this rule prohibits a restricted infantry unit from sliding sideways. Such a unit can move somewhere. It has something about it not being an idiot rule. 
Uh, they're intended as a simple mechanism to start the game in a historical direction. These are not idiot rules. Players will not compromise their units or their success by following them. Uh, in most cases, conducting operations as ordered by the plan is a game-winning strategy. Well, again, I feel like I'm taking the, it is an idiot role, and maybe I'm doing it wrong, um, in the sense that I felt like my units should be allowed to recover at an earlier point than they did. And it really was a matter of uh, once things were out of the line or whatever, or were damaged, a little bit, um, moving them back a hex to get to a space where I could recover them was fundamentally reasonable. Uh, I wouldn't do it again, <laughs> but I'm not going to say that the, the, the plan was violated for this. If I was violating the plan, it would cost six victory points because I'm two hexes from my objective. But I think I still have an opportunity to get to that objective. Uh, and it's not like the victory points make a difference. You know, those would still be available if I abandoned the plan. I would just have the flexibility to maybe shift up this way and launch the attack from a different direction or shift southward and launch it from a different direction. Currently, though, I mean, there really isn't much that prevents me. The movement this way is getting closer to this one. Movements this way are getting closer to this one, or possibly this one, but I could even bypass it. Movements this way are getting closer to all of them. So, you know, it's that triangulation thing that gives you a lot of capacity. The thing I couldn't do was falling back, and yes, I violated that. Uh, somebody pointed that out, as often with things, um, not in particular to my play, but as to hey, this is one of the things they didn't like about the game, was that you couldn't move. Well, I actually kind of like that you have to pursue your goal. It's like the war plans in La Grande Guerre. You give them up, you pay a penalty. Um, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> if some of the army is pursuing it and some of it is moving back to recover, I feel like that's more of an operational decision within the plan as to how much I should push my armies. Now, you could argue, well, it is sort of an idiot rule. Well, you have to push your armies harder than you think is reasonable. And then, well, then you have to discard that disclaimer if that's the case. Or maybe I'm an idiot for pulling back. Maybe that's not the best move to make. Maybe I should have continued uh, maximal pressure on that weakened Serbian line. But again, I'm feeling restrained in my capacity to attack the way I want to. And I just did a force march after recovering to minus one CER. I'm like, oh, okay. I force marched to get up into the line, needed an extra movement point. Ended up getting a shitty roll, and now I'm back to where I was before I recovered. <laughs> Great. And so, going through the Serbian side, uh, their movement phase. Moving to put pressure, continuing on this way. Hey, if I can cause some harm, that's great. Uh, also, cutting things off here and maybe putting some pressure down here. Again, casualties may be great. I'm going to have to flip this sucker uh, to provide supplies. I hope I remember. It's got plenty of supplies for those couple of units. Over here completed the entrenchments and then shuffled units back into the line and out of the line. And like I said, I had a little bit of a problem. Maybe if I had uh, thought a little more carefully, this unit could have gone into here, which would have done something. It's not as good as putting a uh, a big division, like I wanted to get a big division here, I wouldn't have been able to. Uh, this only has three movement points left, which actually couldn't even get it here. Uh, so yeah, so I think I was going to be taking the force march no matter what, because that's a four point movement, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not positive. Yeah, it's got that lowland river shit. And those are expensive to move through, so 
that would have been a problem. And now it's to the Austrian counter move. Austrian reaction, well, since there weren't prepared attacks, I could slide away. Here I'm starting to dig in. I think this is an important spot to stop the Serbs in their advance, but I got a lot of room here uh, to do so. So yeah. I would rather tighten my lines up a little bit uh, before, before I do. I got to worry about this though. This is, so here, here's actually the problem. This may be the point where I have to defend because I also don't want them slipping through here. Now they can't get supply through there though without getting this roadway. So that's probably safe. Except there's a 15 hex supply line from here. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but only through one, one mountain without a road. So no problem. No problem. Yeah, I can fall back up. I can't give them the Drina, though. So I may want to defend forward of that uh, just to get some space. And over here, continuing the recovery, since I cheated, I may launch an attack here. I am really unlikely to repeat this attack because of the entrenchments now. And it, improved position. What does that mean? It's probably nothing as detailed as entrenchments. First of all, this area of the war saw less detailed, uh, less significant entrenchment. Uh, everything to the east, kind of, the west front gives you one image. That's not the image of the entrenchments that happened here. But also, this is really early in the war, so we're probably just talking about some breastworks and, and, and whatnot being put in place. Not the, uh, you know, not even the, the level of entrenchment that happened eventually in the East Front. Ah, uh, and I guess we go on to attacks. Um, I think this is probably the only attack the Serbs are going to make. Regretting not dropping a prepared attack marker here, if I had the movement points to it. I'm not sure I would have, because I would have had to spend... Yeah, I would have had to spend the major, uh, enough movement points building those entrenchments uh, to get that up to the 13 or whatever that I don't think I could. I'm at the 3 to 1 level there. I think I'm going to go to that, go with that. Over here, this was just a, a wash, really. Uh, plus 2 versus plus 2. Nobody took a CR penalty. One of the Austrians pound into here. Uh, that's another 3 to 1 attack. Yeah. I'm draining Serbian artillery shells and that's part of why maybe they don't want to attack. <clears throat> because if you're not going to get much of a result. Now I had a unit in here that I would have liked to have pulled off the line uh, <laughs> and found someplace safe to recover. It's got like a strength point loss. Who knows what it's got for CERs. It's a little guy. Uh, it's probably okay any losses there but it took the strength point loss last time right eh, I guess it's fine it's not really hurting anything being on the line um I assumed it had a CER penalty and basically we got no effect out of anything which means we go back down here Cav isn't going anywhere uh, river step we have built this new pontoon this is a big deal because I can slide my artillery in. I've got plenty of artillery, but I'm not hitting the maximum levels on on the chart for, you know, I'm looking here. I need 15 artillery. I'm hitting around 10. One extra is not going to do it, but if the whole core hits. One thing to note is that core distinction, what core something's assigned to, is a much bigger deal than what army. And you're marking the army with these kind of things, but like this um, sixth army element, uh, I don't know which corps this is, 15th corps, is able to operate pretty much like a fifth army corps would without transferring it over. <coughs> the, two, the two armies, uh, the two separate corps can't, help each other in combat particularly. So uh, you kind of want to keep your core segmented, but the fact that 
they're drawing from a different supply source doesn't make much difference. Now, um, 15th Corps has no units that are assigned to it, which of course means that I could throw extra units into the 13th Corps or something like that, uh, which would work fine, um, if needed. <laughs> what I'm looking at is probably one core, two core, and a third core trying to push through this way and get at, 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 uh, get at that tender underbelly. Um, I get to move the commodities, and there won't be any victory point changes. It's to the end of the player turn, which is an important thing because I'm tired and it's time to stop. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to try to squeeze out a full player turn in, in, uh, at the end of the night. And for the office, again, having trouble with our memory uh, card. Um, I really ought to replace it, but it's my only big one. <coughs> my only really big one. The um, Austrian move started to pull away, or continued to pull away, over here. Entrenchments here. Slipping 15th Corps to come down and try to outflank. That's just going to stretch out Serbia's line. There is some danger. This uh, brigade is kind of threatening that uh, supply source. And I may have to pull back a unit in order to defend the supply source. Um, doing multiple prepared attacks, just trying to win through attrition or whatever. <laughs> Continue recovering this unit illegally. And other than that, that's about it. Oh, pushed across the river with the artillery and an extra uh, an extra asset just to keep piling more and more troops in into the into the uh, fire. Um, but yeah, I mean to me it looks like the Austrians are actually succeeding in their plan. Um, sure, it's not, you know, the driving movements that you see in World War II, but this is World War I in mountainous terrain, you know. It's also not the driving movements you're going to see on the West Front, uh, or the East Front for that matter, I would guess, although Galicia probably is going to be kind of painful in the same sort of way. Not a whole hell of a lot for the Serbs to do. Again, I don't want to launch an attack there. I shifted some forces over. One problem is I've got a whole division regiment combination, which is as big as things get uh, running there in that direction. I've already got one there, and there's only, you know, I can only use that as an attack, uh, as a single hammer. <laughs> so it might make more sense uh, to try to put it here, get an outflank bonus, whatever. The problem is, this is probably going to get out of the way before I can do anything about it, so. Screw that. I mean, it's a weak space as the rear guard, but I'm not expecting it to hold up there. So I'm sending this up, and it may end up joining the main force instead of trying to press here. Because a conglomeration of force just doesn't work in the mountains. Nothing really does. <laughs> The mountains are hard to push through. Up here, I was able to shift a unit that I had here in sort of a semi-reserve. It's part of the line, but boom, it could go right in. And since the prepared attack is there, I get to strike there. Uh, kind of don't want to... So the problem is the calve... I'll move the cav up here. And being here doesn't help. Uh, somebody pointed out that two hex counters are actually useful for this, for being able to create a reserve when you don't have one. And it kind of makes sense. If you can, you know, let's say you have a, a full division in each hex, but can't move anything. Whereas if you have a half a division in each hex, splitting the units in half, and can move a second division up, in there. Now you have one and a half divisions on defense, plus it's harder for the attacker to calculate. So I think that is actually uh, the cleverness of those uh, 
double-sized formations. I was also able to move a unit into here, which is important because it will be able to lend its artillery support to the defense. But that just means the Austrians get to launch their attacks. And so that kind of manipulation is the kind of cleverness that doesn't just dawn on me and the person who expressed it. It didn't just dawn on them either. It took them a while of playing to realize that. Oh, it's the kind of thing that, you know, a little hint. And this, this is where I like players' notes and stuff like that. And there are some, but they don't. They go more into the strategy, uh, which I can kind of get a feel for. That I can kind of get through history and through looking at the map and whatnot. It's more of the mechanical operations in in a game that are hard to do. Same same issue that I had with Vietnam. Although uh, in that game, you know, <laughs> the barrier was just so high. I feel. Uh, you know, it felt like, oh, what the hell can I do? I'm doing something that doesn't make any sense with the U.S. And, you know, as I was being tutored into, yeah, here's how the U.S. can actually be somewhat more effective, and now here's how that's countered, and, and oh, <laughs> manipulating the pieces becomes um, too much of the game, and I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I'm all for optimizing and trying to eke out every little bit out of the pieces that you can, but I, it kind of doesn't feel right when um, that becomes the focus of the game. I, I remember that being sort of, you know, on, from an opposite direction, the case for me with uh, Terrible Swift Sword. Uh, I had played it a fair amount, got used to certain... Uh, paradigms, whatever, with the counters to make an assault work or to make a defense work. And I could, we were playing a big multiplayer game where um, I would switch sides to be whichever side, you know, because we had a couple of players who didn't want to play either the Union or the Confederacy for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, although my heart is always more with the confederates for whatever reason and no it has nothing to do with slavery uh, or racism um, a, some of it has to do with the underdog nature the losing side uh, but uh, some of it also has to do with the state's rights argument that was used to cover <laughs> because I do strongly believe that you should not be forced to stay in an association that uh, that you no longer agree with uh, unless you explicitly stated this is forever and ever right <laughs> you know? and even then we have divorce uh, but yeah the um, where the, what was happening was whichever side I was playing for, for any, you know, if I was playing a side for a couple of turns or something, the whole nature of the battle swung in my favor only because I had a better grasp of the combat charts. And, and they're not that complicated, but we, we had uh, people who were not, you know, really used to wargaming at all, and especially the tactical stuff. Uh, but I feel like the same thing would happen here, where manipulation of the pieces, uh, and, and it sure the hell would happen in Vietnam, where manipulation of the pieces can drastically change uh, the outcomes that you get, as opposed to just, you know, how good was your basic idea? And, I mean, maybe that's some of the argument, you know, that this level of detail, the reason you have it is to be able to express at multiple layers, uh, not just your str overall strategy that you can do in a very, very simplistic game, but also um, the, uh, the capability of using these more detailed rules to do something. It just, I don't know. <laughs> okay, results. Uh, the Austrians took a little bit of a stymie here, but they gained this hex and drove the Serbians back. And I am catching another big oops. This one's a big one. This is a big cheat in favor of the Austrians, I think, which would explain why they're doing well. Um, 
So, how you do the die roll modification is here, but it's not well expressed. If we go to that, I fear I have been giving the Austrians the quality advantage <laughs> accidentally. Proficiency ratings, a combat DRM is calculated by subtracting the highest attacking um, proficiency rating from the highest defending. So this should normally be a plus one. Now, I didn't realize that at first. I thought it was the defending off the attacking. That just makes more sense to me emotionally. But it also made sense to me that a negative value to the die would actually um, be advantageous for the defender. <laughs> and it turns out it's not that way. I have a hard time just, well, actually it's not trivial to see. Like this chart is hard to, to comprehend. So I'm absolutely not sure how much of an advantage it is in any direction. So let's take a look. If we're looking at the difference um, of one between say zero and minus one looking at these, well the chart is almost exactly the same a little bit more of a hit on the defender with that minus one. And that seems to be kind of the way it flows. On, on the other hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have been giving the Austrians higher quality units than the Serbs in general throughout this campaign. Now, they don't have the higher morale value, but they have the higher um, proficiency rating just because I've been doing the subtraction the wrong way. Uh, it would be really useful if they told you right here what you actually needed um, because it is kind of counterintuitive to me, um, both that the proficiency rating that you subtract the attacker from the defender. I mean, I can see it going either way, but the attacker's the active person. There should be the one that you're, you're, you're applying to the die roll, sort of. Just, you know, again, completely a matter of just gut feelings as opposed to, you know, any, any real reason, but I feel like most people would align that way if they, if, if they were trying to remember it. And then uh, the thought that a negative DRM would generally be opposed to the attacker, right? And what is minus one AS? Yeah, see, that's actually the attacker's strength. There's nothing else that modifies the die rolls. It's just this quality thing. So there's nothing else that would help lead you towards, huh, is it true that the Austrian units are higher quality but lower morale? You know? <laughs> so that kind of thinking just doesn't come into play because there's nothing else to question um, and to align with. So all you have is the rule and related in one place, not reinforced here. I'm not sure that would have helped me. Uh, and then a complicated chart that it takes, you know, either zoning out on it or uh, playing a significant amount like I have to come to the conclusion of, whoa, wait a minute, I think that's actually in favor of the Austrians. Is that what's meant to be? Are the Austrians meant to be higher quality? That wouldn't make sense because the March units have only a two quality, right? And they're, they're basically reserves being rushed to the front. So very clearly, the higher the number, the better. And, and, and that's when I decided to look it up and make sure. Um, there's a reason to make rules and, and choices to be kind of intuitive. <laughs> and if you're, you're not devoted to, hey, what will people think, well, at least give them a reminder, especially, you know, it's not like, it's not like a simple CRT here. It's something that things change very slowly and they change um, not necessarily uniformly, which I like, but you can't rely 
on people to remember a single line of a rule very easily, especially people like me. Uh, just checking over. This was the Austrian turn, so we got victory points for it. That's just the one victory point a turn that we're collecting. And yeah, so that is why the Austrians are doing so kick-ass. And basically what we're saying is that the Austrian army uh, had a significant quality and training improvement, although not a morale one, <laughs> for the early part of this campaign. We'll switch to what it's supposed to be. We'll see how much that stymies them. But again, the Serbs have been kind of battered against the ropes here. Honestly, given the results I was getting with kind of not great odds, etc., I was kind of wondering, geez, how, how, did the, how are the Serbs supposed to hold out? I mean, historically, the 5th Army did not make it to their location. And I certainly don't feel like pulling the units off the line did me much good. Uh, other, thing, other things than this... I'm not getting much, you know, the two hex units, yeah, I mean, that definitely could have slanted things a little bit more, could have slowed down the Austrian advance a little bit more, but, um, eh, it's coming out interesting anyway, at least, and you got to root for the Austrians, because, you know, again, historically they kind of failed, so, <laughs> if we cheat enough, they can win. Three beers under my belt, which for me is essentially soused. <laughs> uh, I find another error. One that I don't think has had much impact. I might have thrown some artillery in at an earlier point. But I look at the uh, Sava River water law. It's from 1708-1709 or upstream. Past 2909, 3009. So, upstream is indeed this way to me. Okay. So, uh, maybe I got this right. Uh, but it says, any naval squadron found on the Sava between these two hex sides is displaced. <sighs> well, this is downstream <laughs> and then the other set is 2909 to 3009 which is here I don't know what the fuck they're trying to say I mean upstream is this way <laughs> you know I know my upstream downstream whether or not I'm drinking beer uh, I knew it before and I know it now and this is what's fucking confusing me um, I think this is just poorly written, or wrong. Any Donau squadron to 2909. Okay, to me that means if Donau is up here, we'd throw to here, and I guess if Sava's above here, let's see what it says, it'll go to 1708. Yeah, I I think uh, both the Danube and the Sava water is low, but that's not what it says. It says Sava River water low, and the Sava only goes to 2909. I, okay, I, I'm going to ignore it and say I did not make a mistake because it just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Okay, trying to do the best that we can with the movement phase. Uh, still not finding a way to use those two hex counters terribly effectively. Just swapping units in and out. Um, you know, Austrians could slide down there. Try to get more at J on this. <laughs> Similarly over here, but... I'm okay with that, <laughs> you know? I don't really see too much advantage um, from that kind of movement. It feels like the formations that the Serbs have here are fairly good. These guys have no reserves. The Drina unit back here has uh, 
in damaged state fallen back. Uh, we might launch an attack here. I gotta decide that. 7 to 13. You know what? I am going to do so. Simply to keep the pressure up on the Austrians down there. I don't think it makes much difference because neither side is really running low on replacements. The real question there is the Serbian artillery fire. But if we get lucky, we punch a hole and we force them back further. Um, that'll give us a supply route through here, which is kind of important because although this has kind of a supply route, it doesn't have much of one. It's just one to try to create a flanking situation there, which is going to force the Austrians further back, I think. At least that's what this inebriated person thinks. The Austrian movement is somewhat restricted. Not a whole hell of a lot I can do. Pulling back a little bit more here. Shifting a little bit here, but I don't have the movement points to move up this mountain. And I don't have the movement points to move up here from zone to zone. Not that I'm sure that necessarily helps me. But putting more pressure on that unit would be of some value. I could send this in, but I can't attack with both of them. You're only allowed one and a quarter, and <laughs> that would be one and a half. Again, the units are just too big to hit. So I'd be looking at, assuming I remember this strength thing, which I don't really ha have the right to know it's not good odds, you know. Yeah, if I know they're weakened, it's still not great odds, but... <laughs> On the other hand, I'm covered here. I think this is probably still worth doing. Uh, the Serbs do want to launch their attack first, though, so let's get on with it. I'm giving the Serbs their due and actually subtracting the attacker from the defender. Uh, we managed to push it through and take the entrenchment position over to this attack. The chart is somewhat inscrutable, okay? So, <laughs> there was a plus one to the white die roll because the Serbs are better. And, and this is why it's not inherently obvious. That got me up to the six table. I rolled a one on the black die. I get a result of no effect to the attack, well, no modifier to the attacker, great. And plus four, with a potential retreat, that potential retreat requires excel uh, enhanced uh, intensity. Yeah, it's my cord. I keep put, leaving it up on the box and it falls down and it spooks me. Now, if we look down further, we get a guaranteed retreat on others, but less losses. And then as we go higher, it's less losses again but with the same retreat value. So it kind of makes sense, but it's just, it's not, it's not obvious when you look at the chart which way things are going. So anyway, the way I mark this is I make sure that there's no die here for this. I put a plus four here. Now I go over here and start figuring out the artillery values and whether those modify uh, the morale checks, and then I make the morale check itself. And it's a complicated process to figure out the casualties in each case, but you know, it raises each combat action uh, to a level that's much greater than like roll a d6 on a, on a simple CRT and see if you retreat or whatever. And I find that appealing. I just I want to point out how mechanically expensive it is. For example, I paid one artillery round. I'm able to cover, I think there's only one division here, I hope. And one formation next to it. And I counted up seven artillery fire. This is going for the Austrian morale check. They have no modifier to begin with. So I've got seven against what's going to be a th greater than three um, number of divisions. So it comes up with a zero. So it's zero from the first chart and zero from this chart. Now I roll for each of these two hexes, the top one first. I get a six 
I'm pretty sure there's no unit that's that low. Um, if I look at the Fifth Army, you can see their base at 10, and you never go below minus three. So seven is gonna be the worst that I face there. And then I go for the second one, and again, I'm at a zero. And that's perfectly fine. Now I do the same calculation uh, for on the Serbs. I'll come back and talk about that. Again, this is just to highlight how messy the combat system actually is. Turns out there were two forces in here, so I just spent an extra artillery shell for the Serbs. Uh, it comes out to the total strength is two and a half, which puts me here. And shit, I forgot now. <laughs> the number that I just counted looking through these, uh, four, no count there because of the losses. Five. Six. Eleven. So now I compare this to eleven, and I get a zero there, so I'm at the plus four. I only roll one die, even though there's two formations there. They both will deal with this. At plus four, this could end up hurting them very easily. So an 11, that's probably gonna cause losses. So now we pull this out. Wouldn't have to do this. And I've got the Drina one. This is gonna be probably in the second. No, interesting. Where is Drina one hiding? Drina one's over here, 11, they survive with no losses. And then we look at the Timok one and technically, eh, Drina should be over here. I just moved the Serbs. They would have rearranged their forces to meet this. Uh, otherwise, I couldn't defend with both of them. Um, okay, so Timok 1 also, even though it's taking casualties, is at 11, so it's fine. So both my formations are okay as well. The optional retreat doesn't take place. Basically, nothing happened. I fired off a couple of artillery rounds. And that puts us to the finishing phase. Cavs not retiring, river step no. Komaji probably, and victory points no. We'll be flipping to the Austrian turn as soon as I figure out where those Komatachi. <laughs> Since we seem to be holding the line, I have moved that Komitachi off of this space onto here. Uh, I was trying to defend that space as well, but I really don't think it's that big a deal. Now, this could uh, cross the Drina and take that location. And that would actually be a really dicky thing to do. <laughs> which is a good reason why I shouldn't be in the position I'm in. I also shouldn't be recovering this because I'm within three, but I don't know. <laughs> too many, too many mistakes. The biggest thing uh, I feel happened here was the loss of the Austrian uh, entrenchments there. Remember, they're a, a limited facet. I'm not really gaining much here and we're getting to a kind of a stalemate now that the Serbs are actually the quality they should be. All right, that's it for tonight. At least I got this out of the way. Uh, you know, get, got a half turn out of the way. I'd like to, you know, finish up to the interface by the end of tomorrow, but I doubt I'll be able to. Uh, tomorrow's dancing night. And, you know, just really, I also probably will actually have real work to do. Uh, I've been stealing time because I'm waiting for shit to get assigned to me. Okay, the Austrian movement. Uh, falling back over here. I'm digging in two locations. I only have one entrenchment. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Uh, basically, I was going to dig in here. And I'm like, you know, if I get pushed out or choose not to complete that because it's not going to be completed until my next turn. Yeah. How about I have this in place instead? And this could be a partial whatever, uh, getting when I get additional uh, entrenchments down here. 
because I really need to block off both these exits and it may depend on you know where successes are and whatever. And these are both legitimate to do. The only question is, can I start entrenchments when I only have one of these things left? Can I start two? Uh, not sure which one I would pick if I couldn't. Probably this one because I, I'm more complete on it and but whatever. Over here, we got that 15th core sliding in, uh, getting ready to make an attack here. Maybe I could have done a prepared attack, uh, but I want to kind of make more of a threat. And as things stand, this unit is not quite um, isolated, but it's getting pretty close. <laughs> And if this breaks and I can kind of sleaze in there, it might be worth uh, 13th Corps uh, making an assault on these positions. But instead, this is going to be the only attack I'm really planning on making. Got a new unit which started over here. There's no way to cross the Danube. So I'm kind of limping my way across. That may be a mistake. Uh, but I don't know. <laughs> you know. It's like right now it's totally useless back here and I'd rather just keep these river wardens uh, where they are. I mean, there's no reason to pull them out, but there's basically no way to cross the Danube. Um, I think. Maybe I'm missing something. Because there are these... Um... Let's see, FR, affects flank attacks, retreating across, cannot retreat across the Danube, yeah. Yeah, it, it's prohibited movement. The islands allow you to build pontoons, but only if you control both sides of the Danube. Uh, so, I'm not seeing, honestly, I think you could withdraw, not the garrisons, but you could withdraw these river protectors, but... They're there for a reason, I'm assuming, you know, they're watching something. I just don't want to take any chances if something's going to come out and surprise me. But this is a regular unit. Let's get it, let's get it into, into play, is uh, my feeling. Let's guess. This has to be a pontoon. Yeah, and this is the end of uh, that bridge, so I can supply my core. Uh, over here, I sent the core headquarters running off into weird directions. It could go straight up, but it doesn't do me much good there. I've got the army um, depot up there, so I might as well send it up here to eventually get a supply extension in this direction. Uh, but that's about it. And that gets me to counter move. I have a reserve back here and I'm being attacked and I don't need it. <laughs> uh, I'm already stacked as large as I can be. Now, I could add two strength points to my defensive strength by putting the unit in there, but that would expose all the units in the stack uh, to possible results, if I understand correctly. Let me look at that. Because uh, if it didn't, that's sort of a solution to, I don't have to retreat. <laughs> Looked up the effect of withheld units. I do want to throw it in there for the extra couple strength points. Because then I can withhold the other unit. And it will not have to retreat unless everything else retreats. And it will not be affected by any other results. Um, and it's only affected by the smallest retreat result that's impacted. So getting a couple extra throw points seems like a good idea. Uh, the one problem with it, of course, is it's engaged, but I'm not really planning on doing much offensive action. Although this is not unappealing, but I can launch attacks on that anyhow. Hey, so the Austrians actually had a pretty damn good uh, attack here. They pushed through here. And that's putting them in a position to start wrapping around and capturing the 5th Army's goal with the 6th Army. <coughs> a 
that's fine. The Fifth Army just has to move through it or something, I'm sure. And then over here, we battered through there, and I don't know what's happening. Um, you know, it's like I, I'm doing the numbers right, I think now, where uh, I'm adding what should be a penalty, but then I look and I'm like, wow, the two results, had I not added a point or whatever, it would have come out better for the Serb. So, I try, again, trying to discern things from the chart itself, it's too, it's too obfuscated and too interleaved uh, for that to work. I think I've got it right now. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm expending so much effort trying to figure out the combat table and uh, not terribly tortured, but uh, and not at all tortured, but uh, um, counterintuitive <laughs> wording uh, <laughs> that, you know, it's like, uh, gosh. And, and so, like, because of that counterintuitive nature, I keep questioning it again and again, having to go back and look at least at the chart and say, does this even make sense? What the hell's going on here? Um... This was the Austrian turn, so Sonokamaji Sino points, and we get our one point for the Austrians, and I hope I haven't been giving it to them too many times. But I probably took it away too many times, too. So, who knows? And that'll put us here. Apparently, this is going to end the poor recovery rule, which means that the Austrians only have to be three hexes away to do recoveries, which... Right, and that's it for today, I think. Through cheating or whatever, with the Serbians this hard pressed, uh, I'm having a difficult time finding <laughs> the ability to move units off the line to recuperate, whatever. Uh, the Austrians are doing a hell of a job. Now, yes, I made some errors that made that possible. Um, I'm not seeing much traction here, and I don't really want to waste my artillery shells and whatever resources I have when what I'm trying to do is dig in and defend. Um, one thing that I haven't done is I haven't done, and, and this may be a part of the problem, I haven't done sort of the intense defense, don't give up space. And maybe I'm coming to a point where I have to start thinking about it. So 16th Corps down here, digging in. I chose to dig in here, and I figure I can't keep the points if I don't have a marker. Uh, it's a little weird, because I'm getting a marker next turn, and I should be able to dig in for one point or something. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, but, yeah. And I feel like I'm just kind of making up rules there, so I probably should be able to. Uh, over here, we've shifted the axis of our attack to try to punch through here. Again, this is our victory point space, as well as the goal for the 5th Army. So, if we can take that, we free ourselves up, then we become able to go hunting victory points wherever we can find them, right? It's not like there's a whole lot of places for them. Um, but we can try to press further and further this way. There's victory points in that direction, and... I get more victory points um, for the hex rod. That could become quite a large amount of victory points each interface. So uh, I forgot and did not notice that there's fairies on the Danube and corrected uh, my positioning from that. I'm also gonna try to launch an attack here. This is a prepared assault and this thing can jump in and defend, but hey, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, it gets me right to the uh, right to the location, and if I get this hex, and I think it's pretty unlikely, I will really put those guys in a world of hurt. They're already in kind of a painful position, but yeah. For the Serbian reaction, I had to force march that cab back in. I shouldn't have left the hex. Uh, although, yeah, I think it was in that hex. It gave me flexibility and made it so that this was maybe less of an attackable hex. Um, I hope I assigned these, I believe I have, to the right core. 
it's making 13th core weaker and weaker. It's the one facing all of uh, all, all of the Serbian defense position. But and I think we're going to have to pull out of those entrenchments. But we'll see. We'll see what happens because this this turn could actually like major setbacks for the Austrians could change the nature at this moment. Instead, things went relatively well for the Austrians. Even with a high roll and, and not great odds, it was like three to two, but went up to two to one for prepared assault, a fairly high roll on the white die, but a lucky one on the black die got me uh, the hex. And that's actually five victory points I just collected there. I don't think I've cleared the Fifth Army's objective, though. <laughs> and it's kind of an interesting situation by getting the Hex. I'm in an exposed place there where the Serbs could actually probably do a pretty massive counterattack. To what end? Yeah, that's the question. Do we want to fight back and forth uh, across that Hex attritionally? Um, or do we want to try to get out of there? <laughs> Without further further pain, uh, it's a whole whole bunch of questions. But I also have a unit that I can station up here that puts this into a flank attack. Ooh, maybe I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, and if I don't put that big division in there, it's not going to hold. Ooh. I mean, I could move one of these smaller guys in, or both of them, and kind of hope for the best. But yeah, I can't afford that flank attack. That's, that's too much. And on the other side, the Serbs took a little bit of uh, losses. The Austrians did not. Uh, let me try to think about what the heck I want to do with that. And this is the end of the uh, turn, so we get another victory point for this. I think the best answer is just to leave it open and not go in. So I didn't collect the victory points for it. And I'm not taking it. Uh, can the Serbs go back? Sure. Um, I just don't see, I don't have enough force here to, to uh, push the amount of effort in there. I hate this because the reason I attacked, it didn't, it wasn't that great an attack. And the reason I did it was to clear the hex and whatever and put more pressure. But here's the thing, if the Serbs don't go into here, I've got room for an attack into there. This unit, you know, where it's standing can't be flanked. Whatever I throw in there, I mean, let's say I throw, yeah, what the hell. Let's throw the big division into there. It's not, a, it's not as good. And that'll get me the five victory points, which puts me up to 13 now. Screw it. <laughs> because, yeah, whatever, you know, it's possible they could launch an attack here, but they can't really coordinate this with anything else. It's not going to add any strength, not that it's very big. Uh, similar, well, actually, they could. They've got third core here, so I could link that in. And this is coming. So the Serbs have to make their decision pretty quickly. Do I abandon my position because I lost the Hex or uh, do I keep fighting on that, that line? And I collected the victory points, but I got to look up to see whether or not this somehow meets fifth army goal. I don't think it does. The way it's worded, I don't know so much. Um, the goal is not gained here, though. It's gained here. Essentially the same. So, yeah, and it happens on every player turn. Um, the way it's worded makes it almost sound like it only happens on your player turn. No, this is a joint phase, so uh, either side is impacted by it. Units have recovered fully. For the Austrians, they actually had more replacements than they can track on the chart. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I'm actually allowed to create March divisions out of that, but I don't have any loose. I just really haven't been taking many casualties. Serbians who get less uh, replacements. 
um, we're able to fill everything out and still have excess left over. So, I mean, it's not like they're pressed that hard either. And some of that may be the not pushing, especially on the turn just before an interface. Might make sense for the Austrians to uh, push for better results and try to force uh, a, uh, a retreat just before an interface is going to happen. Speaking of which, I actually have Montenegrin replacements. Why don't I build one? I'm allowed to build it there. Yay! <laughs> okay. I mean, saving them up doesn't do me any good. So what the hell? And that will push the rest of these out to the fourth. Push us here. And we are going to load this one up. And maybe a little shorter than others. Uh, I maybe finally actually, oh, and we have new improved positions for both. Finally, maybe actually stepping away a, a, a great deal. Um, I go so deep into the, into the combat in this game because it's intricate and exciting, kind of like the OCS combat system is. But, uh, you know, and also into reasoning, uh, some of it geometrical about, you know, do I have a supply line here? What can I do here, there? And I feel like I'm going into too much depth. So, uh, save, save, uh, save some of YouTube's uh, storage capacity. It's like the game is over. I mean, in terms of victory points, if we were towards the end of a night and playing multi, you know, like I am at the end of the camera and playing like over multiple days or whatever, and I looked at this victory point total, we're above the nine. I don't see anything that's gonna stop the Serbs. Yes, or, or the Austrians. Yeah, there's some Serbian units, another division and, and whatnot, but there's more Austrians coming in. Uh, I don't know how many withdrawals we're gonna be looking at in the future. Not seeing a lot. Looks like those are actually units coming in at this point. So, I just don't see, uh, you know, this is they're, they're, somewhere around here is where the Serbians gave up or where the Austrians gave up and fell back. And I have not had to do that. I've been able to keep the pressure on and keep fighting and maybe fighting less exuberantly but it's to more effect, especially given that the Austrian troops, you know, got this quality improvement <laughs> promotion in, in the early part of the game. I, I really think that that probably had the biggest effect and why we're seeing, you know, what we're seeing. But it is a very, very static game still. <laughs> uh, we're not talking about broad sweeping motions over clear terrain for the most part.